This is a dolly zoom. Commonly known as the Vertigo effect for its debut in Hitchcock's Vertigo, it is primarily a camera move that is created using different focal lengths to create a visual distortion between the foreground and background. One of the simpler explanations on the web is by film critic Craig Paddower. The dolly zoom shot is achieved by dollying back while simultaneously zooming in on the subject or by dollying in and zooming out simultaneously. Basically, it's the result of both the zooming of the lens and the dolly of the camera opposite to the movement of that lens. These two effects cancel each other out, causing the main subject to stay in relatively the same position with the image's field of view and focal length shifting. While the effect definitely looks cool, it is commonly ridiculed as a trick shot, one intended to be flashy rather than meaningful or helpful to a video or film. Its first usage in prominent media was in Vertigo, pioneered by the second unit uncredited cameraman Erman Roberts, in order to emphasize the Vertigo experienced in the perspective of the main character when looking down a stairwell. Differently, Steven Spielberg uses the same technique in his 1975 blockbuster Jaws. As Chief Brody realizes that the kids in the ocean are being attacked by the shark, the camera creates a visual distinction between the calm and the ensuing chaos. The zoomed out background is accented by a slight vignette, giving a sense of revelation and reality experience differentiation. In that moment, his worldview is changing to one of worry and panic. The similarity of these two uses, Jaws and Vertigo, are their interaction with perception. The shot uses the distortion of the character's world to manifest their experience, either as a representation of emotion or as a reproduction of their literal perspective. Being focused so heavily on lens focal lengths and image distances, the functions of the camera responsible for a successful dolly zoom are a bit complex. So basically, with cameras, a long focal length, a zoomed in lens separating the image plane from the camera sensor, narrows the field of view and works alongside the longer distance to crush the image's depth, creating a shallow, seemingly zoomed depth of field. This might cause a blur and out of focus appearance, but the larger aperture or iris can help keep the full image in focus. The shifting zoom and focal length, in conjunction with the backwards or forwards movement of the camera, create the stretching or shrinking background behind a relatively stationary subject. To try my own hand at this effect, I went out and found a construction dolly, some PVC pipe, rollerblade wheels, and a tripod. Together they make this thing, a camera dolly, able to make the smooth movements that you see on TV and the movies. Using this, I'll be able to pull off a steady pull back, enabling for more access to the zoom and more precision to match the speed of my dolly to the speed of my zoom. So, as you do, I threw it on my driveway, set up my assistant on a cardboard box and an IKEA organizer thing to see if it all worked. And, um, well, what do you know? As you can see, it wasn't exactly a one and done feat either. I fought with the camera's focus for a bit, but between the autofocus and wider aperture, it mostly worked out in the end. The movement was still a bit shaky, but walking a bit slower and holding less weight on the dolly smoothed it out quite a bit. After a few dozen attempts, I ended up settling on one of them. Obviously, I'm quite fond of the dolly zoom and I liked my own results so much that I became confident in my ability to include it in another project of mine. However, instead of trying to pull it off by eye like before and taking dozens of tries to get right, I wanted to plan it out a bit better. To figure out the math behind the dolly zoom, I asked my physics teacher for a bit of help. After an hour or so of talking and planning it out, we ended up with this equation. 1 over focal length equals 1 over distance from the object plus 1 over magnification times distance from the object. This equation was primarily derived from two basic lens light equations. Magnification equals negative distance from the image over distance from the object, which is also equal to height of the image over height of the object. 1 over focal length is equal to 1 over distance from the image plus 1 over distance from the object. Since the image on the camera is staying the same size, this means that the height of the image, hi, is staying the same. Since the object in real life is not physically growing, the height of the object, hi, remains constant. This means that the magnification is going to be a constant variable based on the height of the subject in frame and the size of the image produced, which can be estimated by the camera sensor size. With the distance from the object, do, changing by the length of your dolly, your focal length is bounded by the physical camera lens. For example, I have a 28 to 55 millimeter lens for my Canon D3i, which means my focal length can change about 27 millimeters. For some, this might be the most restrictive variable in this test, but the length of your dolly is also a factor in how dramatic your dolly zoom can be. Mine is only 5 feet, about 1500 millimeters. This means my distance from the object, my DO, can only have a difference of 1500 from the nearest and the farthest values. Using this 1500 millimeter range, I created a table of values, inserting 2 meters as a default object height about a person tall. I then googled the sensor size of the camera that I would use, a Sony AX100, and found it to be around 15.86 times 13.2 millimeters. In the image frame, the sensor area, the image could reasonably take up 10 millimeters of that vertical space, so I used an HI of 10 millimeters and an HO of 2000 millimeters 
to get a magnification of 0 0.005. I then plugged in a set of distance values that had a range of 1500 millimeters, plugging them into the various formulas to fill out the rest of the chart. A simple analysis of this chart reads, when the camera is 8 meters from the subject, the camera should be zoomed in at a 40 millimeter focal length. The image created by the 2 meter subject is 40 millimeters away from the lens and 10 millimeters tall. This will create an image with an identically sized subject if the camera is 6.5 meters from the subject zoomed to 32.5 millimeters. With this information, I was able to come up with a designated range of focal lengths so that I knew where the zoom had to start and end to have a matching image height. For example, in the earlier table, I was able to find that for each foot I moved the dolly, I also had to zoom the camera 1.5 millimeters. This ratio is key to having a fully planned out dolly zoom, such that it will be smooth and consistent. A camera with a digital zoom especially is helpful in cases such as these, as they regulate the rate at which the focal length changes, allowing for an easier adaptation to match the f to do ratio. Keep in mind that the dolly zoom is best executed in subtlety, as it is inherently an optical illusion that can ruin the geography of a scene and confuse the audience. Techniques like the dolly zoom are only one tool out of many to create a fully developed scene and can easily appear out of place if emphasized too much.